Uh, this is one of my biggest wins, I would say, for the fact that I did one of my favorite positions in modern jiu-jitsu, the Aoki Lock, on Shinya, the creator of the position. Um, a position that I became famous for when I competed in the gi, I won many world titles with, is the straight foot lock. And a variation of the straight foot lock is the Aoki Lock. So um, I feel like mastery of this position, you can't get more mastery of the position than doing it on the creator of the position, right? So uh, for me, this is like such a special victory uh, doing this particular move on the creator, the legend, Gene Aoki. And it's such an honor to face him. You know, I kept telling him that before the match, like when I was in the, the ring, I wept him and said, it's an honor to face you, professor. And then after the match, when uh, the fight was over, that's the first thing I said also, you know. So it was a very special moment for me being out there with Chinya. And I think that's why even when I was full-blown sick, like I am right now, I still feel really sick. Uh, I took this match because I wanted to have the opportunity to roll with him again because he's such a legend. He said in Japanese, origato. So he said, thank you. So uh, he spoke to me in Japanese, which is pretty cool. I said, azazda, which is slang, thank you. Yeah, so Shinya was the first match I ever saw in one championship, you know. So being one of the top competitors of one championship now, and the first time I ever saw one championship was Shinya competing. So you know how special that is to be facing the guy that made me actually interested in and a fan of one championship. It was Shinya, you know. So again, it's a very special moment for me. Like it all circles back to me just watching Shinya compete and growing up watching him compete, you know. He's been competing since I was born, probably, you know, so he's such a legend. And um, I think that this match has to do with martial arts in general, uh, with a master and the students passing on, like the master passing on the torch to the students, you know. So in his generation, he inspired my generation. And then me uh, defeating Shinya represents martial arts where the master passes it on to the next generation. And then in my generation, I'll eventually get beat by someone from the next generation and so on. And I think that that's the beauty of martial arts. So um, that's why it's also special, this match. It represents how martial arts is, is right? Um, it had very similar vibes to when I faced Iminari, right? But um, the reason why Shinya was very special to me was, again, the Aoki lock is one of my favorite moves. You know, I won many world titles doing his position. So the fact that I did his position on the creator, uh, again, it's the most special way I could have won this match. Um, I just got goosebumps because um, I just thought about the food poisoning. Yeah, I'm I'm still very ill. Like I feel very lethargic right now. You know, like that infection sick feeling. Uh, I still have that a lot right now. Um, I don't have that much energy, but um, I overcome. I just. I put it in my mind, it doesn't matter how you feel. And this is so many, this is what I said in my post-fight interview. I think it was so fast. I don't know. If, I think I said this because everyone asks me, how do you perform when you have so much stress, How so much pressure? What I tell them is it doesn't, you don't have to mentally be amazing. You don't have to be perfect in your mind. You know, so many people think in their mind, they have to feel the best they felt. No, you don't. The only thing you have to feel that no matter how you feel, your body will keep going. You'll function when you don't feel well. You know, and you have to have the ability to do that. So that does take mental strength to shut off your mind when it's telling you to rest and you don't feel well. Um, again, I was supposed to take off two weeks. That's what the doctor told me. He told me, don't get your heart rate above 110 uh, beats per minute for two weeks. And then like a day or two after I was training and I fought this week. So um, definitely um, was hard and definitely a difficult task I had. Uh, but it made me so motivated to show myself I could do it. You know, I wanted to show myself that even when I'm uncomfortable, I don't feel well, I could do this. And that lesson and this experience will transfer to the next fight. So when I doubt myself and you don't feel well, because we're humans, we always doubt ourselves. You know, everyone still thinks that the best people, every match they go in, they're like, I'm the best. No one could beat me. Yeah, maybe stupid people are like that, right? But I'm very logical. I know I could lose any match. So um, I respect all my opponents. So every time I have doubt, I got an experience with myself. And I showed myself even when I, you know, again, uh, what I said before, that it doesn't matter what your body feels or what it's thinking. If your body could perform uh, under those circumstances, you will win. And 
that's what I did, you know, and I showed myself that again. So the next experience, I'm ready for that again and again. I'm still scared of water. <laughs> uh, I'm freaked out from it. So um, yeah, I, I got defeated by watermelon last week, but uh, I'm back this week. Um, I'm I'm sticking to only acai now. Uh, the problem was the only reason I got sick, I eat acai every night after training. Everyone knows this. But uh, when I came to Thailand, I couldn't find good acai right away. So I switched to watermelon and I was eating just from Grab, which is Uber Eats in the US. I just kept ordering watermelon for like a month straight and I didn't get sick until this one day. So um, yeah, I'm back to acai. I found a good one here in Thailand, so I'm good. Uh, I will not get sick from watermelon again. I'm a white belt in Muay Thai, I suck, but uh, uh, I love it, I love it. I'm so excited to keep learning like Jiu Jitsu. And I think why my mind's so strong right now is because I did Muay Thai for one month. I think it's the hardest training in the world. And it pushed my mind so much. You know, I was not comfortable at all this past month doing pads every night. Um, I was training three hours of Jiu Jitsu in the morning and then every night, two hours Muay Thai. And you could barely walk after that session. You know, it's a very tough training that Muay Thai. But, but it made me physically another level. Um, and I think you guys see that, you know, like um, I was, I, I'm full blown sick and I still perform like I did against Shinya uh, because of how good shape I was uh, the before I got sick, you know, because I was training so hard in Muay Thai. So it's making my Jiu Jitsu better, but um, I want to see how fast I can learn, you know, um, I'm going to go spend time now with Rod Tang. Uh, we're going to Southern Thailand. Uh, we're going to his house there and um, he's going to teach me and help me. So I have the best Muay Thai person in the world, in my opinion, the GOAT, teaching me Muay Thai. I like our odds, you know, I, I feel like I can learn anything and I have the discipline and work ethic to learn. So I have the right people helping me. Uh, let's see how long it takes me. But I definitely am interested in uh, MMA. Never Muay Thai, because I'll never be good enough for a Muay Thai fight. But uh, definitely MMA. I feel like I could get to like a blue purple belt level in Muay Thai. I'll be good for MMA. I'm white belt right now, so...